there, I've heard all the jokes in the world about fruitcakes. You know, fruitcakes, there's only one fruitcake in the world and people just keep sending it around to each other. You know, fruitcakes make the door stops. But actually, I make a fruitcake recipe that I have people beginning around Halloween ask me every year, are you going to make your fruitcakes this year? And I ship them all over the place. This is a recipe that God knows how old it is because my grandmother learned it from her mother-in-law. And her mother-in-law was from England. So absolutely no telling how far back this particular recipe goes. I'm just going to uh, mix it and show you all how it works. We know, one of the reasons we know it's an old recipe is because the original card that it came off of, things were um, measured in, in pounds and ounces and things like that. It was not cups and teaspoons and tablespoons. But anyway, you start with butter and sugar. And pound of sugar and a half a pound of butter. Now I know that sounds like a lot but this recipe makes four cakes. We're not talking about one cake here. Okay. Let's get this back a little bit. There we go. Alright. Now wash my hands thoroughly because I'm going to do this like I learned how to do it when I was little. And that is to cream the butter and the sugar by hand, literally by hand. So, here's a half a pound of butter. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. My grandmother always swore that you wanted to do it this way and not by a, a mixer, electric mixer, or something like that, or even a spoon, because the warmth of your hands helps incorporate the butter and the sugar together better. So there, there's a little butter, and now I'll begin working the sugar in. Good and mixed up. I remember helping make these fruit cakes when I was a very small child. And back in those days, which we're talking about the early to mid 60s, fruit cake weekend was two was a whole weekend, it was a two day job. Because then you couldn't buy the nuts already cracked and shelled and everything. You had to buy walnuts and crack them and pick them out and, shed and shell them. You had to buy pecans or pick up pecans. Many's the weekend in October, I go down to our barn lot where there were at that time several big old pecan trees. And me and my cousins would pick up pecans because we knew they'd go into the Christmas cooking. So we usually spent Saturday getting the nuts ready. And then we'd get together, and it would be my mother and my grandmother and my Aunt Lucille, and actually make the fruit cakes on Sunday afternoon after Mass. Okay. There we go. Sugar and butter is nicely incorporated. And go wash my hands. All right, we have eggs, and like with any cake, you mix your eggs in one at a time. And this thing takes six. So there's one. Now, 
when my mother and grandmother used to make this, they'd make a double batch. And they had literally a dish pan, a metal dish pan, that they had set aside for the specific purpose of making fruit cakes every year. I can't make a double batch because I can't stir a double batch. We had to get my dad to do the mixing once everything got it put in because this is gonna be a very, very thick batter. All right. Next we have the flour. And again, a pound. But the trick here is that you don't add it all at once. You've got to reserve flour in order to flour your fruit and your nuts. Otherwise, they will sink like stones to the bottom of the cake and you will have a doorstop. There we go. So we begin to add a little bit of flour. And here's where the fun begins, where the good stuff goes in. I've already mixed the, I've already measured the nuts. And I think that's what makes this better than most fruit cakes is there's a full pound of nuts that goes into this. And it's one of those deals of, my grandmother never measured anything. It was always just kind of my eye. But over the years, I've figured out that it works best to put in, you know, 16 ounces is a pound. I put in eight ounces of pecan, six ounces of walnuts, and two ounces of almonds. And your flour. it's getting stiffer and stiffer to mix. We will make it into a thinner batter later, but you will see how. That's the other secret. Now, the fruit that goes into here, and this is one of the reasons why I think this recipe probably came from England, does not have a lot of candied fruit. It has golden raisins, which I have had soaking for a while. It has roughly four ounces of dates. Just flour these and add them in. And that's kind of a very English fruitcake fruit to use. Once again, flour them so that they won't sink and they'll stay evenly distributed in the batter. thing is candied fruit, which is what most people think of when they think about making fruit cake. It's part of the reason why my fruit cake's a little bit different is I don't use all that candied fruit that a lot of people do. I strictly use eight ounces in four cakes and I'll, the finer chopped it is, the better I like it. All right. We'll do 
use the last of the flour to flour it. Back again when I was a kid, this was part of the, the Saturday preparation for the Sunday cooking. But you couldn't buy fruitcake mix like that. You had to buy candied pineapple, and you had to buy candied citron, and you had to buy candied cherries, the red ones and the green ones, and chop them up. Now, comes the ingredient that makes it good. Shall we say the liquid ingredient? It took me forever to find these. This is a beer, a beer glass, and I did not realize it for years. My grandmother took one of my grandfather's beer glasses and used it for her measurement. Don't know what he felt about it, but hey. Now you don't necessarily, you don't want to buy you don't want to use your very best whiskey for this. But you want to use good whiskey. Reasonably good whiskey. Now that's not quite enough. So I'm going to, that's Kentucky bourbon. I'm going to step over to the and mix Kentucky and Ireland. There's some Jamesons. And I know John Jameson would be happy to have his whiskey in the fruit cake. I have a good friend who is an entertainer, singer. And uh, one of the songs he used to do as part of his Christmas program dealt with a fruit cake that was not really good. So it got to be a standing joke between us. Danny O'Flaherty was his name. Got to be a standing joke between us that whenever I get a chance to go to one of his Christmas shows, I bring him a fruit cake. And that got to be that got to be a joke. Okay, now we mix it until that thick, thick batter liquefies a little bit. And folks, except for the eggs and the little bit of water that I use to mix the uh, leavening in, the only liquid in these fruit cakes is whiskey. Okay, you can see now that we've got much more of a batter than a dough, thanks to some good old whiskey. And now comes the tricky part where there is no measurement. This is one of those things where I just start dumping until the voice of my grandmother in my ear says stop. The seasonings in these fruit cakes and my fruit cakes are cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. And cinnamon is the, the high note. That's the most. You can never have enough cinnamon. It's an anti-inflammatory, so along with that whiskey, it's there's stuff in this fruit cake that does body good. A little less nutmeg. And then a couple of dashes of spice to start with. We mix that in. So like I said, and for anybody who's having heart failure looking at me dumping stuff in here, all these spices and everything, remember this makes four cakes. And that's got it. Literally, spices are to taste. And that's got it. Now, I did a little bit of work ahead of time 
getting the pans ready. As far as I'm concerned, the secret to baking anything is parchment paper. And you don't have to line the entire pan with it, I found. Line the bottom. Cookie sheet if you're making cookies. And it will not stick. Whoops. Spray a little cooking spray here on the sides. And we dish it up. That's the start. I'll go back and one. Okay, the pans are about two thirds full. And I'm about to make a big mistake that I'm fixing to fix. I need to add my leavening to it, but you can do that in the pan. Let me add a little water. It'd be different if I was trying to do it with dried leavening, but uh, not this is baking soda. It's a teaspoon of baking soda to a quart cup of water. and I make a nice heaping teaspoon. Mix it in. One, two, three, four. And mix that together. Here's another thing my grandmother did not have. Alexa, set timer for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, starting now. And so we cook. Okay. It's been about 50 minutes. Now we'll let it cool 10 minutes. And it's ready to go. 